I've got to say something about Jim. You know, it takes a lot for Gene and I to leave our ranch down in Navasota. So when Bob called me and said that we're going to have a tribute for Jim Harrison, we said, we'll be there. Now, it's raining and thundering out there. We never fly in bad weather. But today we were determined to be here to uh, give a tribute to Jim, and, uh, and that's why we're here, because we love this guy. You know, amazing Jim. You know, I've known Jim from the early 60s, and I used to watch him fight at all the events that I, I'd go to and fight in, and, and he'd be knocking these guys unconscious. I said, man, this guy has no control, you know? <laughs> and and, and uh, anyway, he comes down to my karate school one day. He says, let's spar. I said, okay. <laughs> anyway, we start sparring. And uh, anyway, I come in to do a move on Jim, and Jim throws a punch. Bam, and stops it right there. I said, he does have control. <laughs> <laughs> but I met uh, Josh Barnett at the last uh, Pride fight in Vegas before UFC bought them. And I was talking to Josh, and he says, I think you know my instructor. I said, really, who's that? And he says, Jim Harrison. I said, yeah, I know him. He's one of my good friends. And I said, no wonder you're so dadgum tough. You know, because, <laughs> and I said, because uh, Jim, you know, Jim's one of the toughest guys I know. But uh, anyway, we, we're so proud to be here to uh, honor uh, Jim today and, and just let you know how much we love you, buddy. Thank you. I uh, really don't know what I ever did to deserve this and especially deserve all these type of people, it's such good friends. In 1965, I went to June Reese tournament in Washington, D.C., and uh, this gentleman here, Pat Burleson, walked up to me and introduced himself, and uh, I watched him fight in the finals that night, and the finals were, uh, three of my four idols were already in the finals, and that was Pat Burleson, Alan Steen, and Mike Stone, and uh, some poor guy named Worley that walked out of the ring kind of looking like he was a mummy, because every one of them dropped him and knocked him out. And I just thought, man, just to be anything near as good as those guys uh, would just be wonderful. And uh, I lost the first round to a guy named Ingalls. I moved in to hit him, and he was a little short, stuck a stubby guy, but he had the fastest sidekick I ever ran into, really. <laughs> I've run a lot of you guys' uh, sidekick down here. Incidentally, uh, several years ago, I changed the name of Alan Steen's uh, karate schools. Somebody's got some buzz. It's not Taekwondo, it's Texquando. <laughs> they even have, we even have some posters and patches made up like that. And some of the Texans did that. But anyway, um, Pat was very gracious, inviting me to come to Texas. So to the Texas, the first fight that was up was in um, uh, Oklahoma City in Jack Wong. And uh, I got to fight there. And uh, Alan Steen and I fought. And uh, I uh, stepped in, we bowed in, and I stepped in and I hit Al in the face with a, hit, with a heel kick. And uh, his head kind of flew back a little bit, but, you know, he's a Texan. He didn't even feel it. And uh, they called it a point, and he says, you guys are going to call that a point? And the referee come up and started wiping blood off his mouth. <laughs> and he says, i got to guess that was a point. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, he got set up for that classic... Um, what he calls his uh, um, sliding sidekick. I was in a left lead, and as he broom in, I was going to switch sides and block that kick and turn and hit him with a spinning back kick. Well, the, I got about square on as I could bend when that foot hit me in the chest. I didn't touch down for 10 feet, and I slid about 30 feet and banged my head against the bleachers. I sat there and shook my head, and the referee come over and asked me if I'm all right, and says, well, I think so. And Al standing back in the ring, and he says, hey, Jim, come on, get back in the ring. 
So we got back in the ring and we finished the fight and I got my ass kicked. But uh, just to be with those kind of guys. And when I walked in the door, I saw Skipper Mullins and David Moon kicking the basketball net. They were seeing who could kick the basketball net hard enough to flip it up through the ring and back down. And I thought, well, where's the trampoline these guys are taking off from? You know? And I, I just couldn't imagine the difference. We'd been fighting uh, in St. Louis and uh, Chicago and place like that. And a lot of people up there, you, uh, you either heard them in the ring or you guys heard them out of the ring afterwards. And these people would just get out there and just beat the hell out of each other and walk off the floor laughing and bleeding. And just, it, it, was, it was just a totally different atmosphere. They were also so respectful and uh, polite and everything like that. It was just, uh, I thought I'd just cross the line into a different dimension. And then I started every chance I'd get, I would come to fight in Texas or, or um, Oklahoma. We had the same kind of people up in Kansas. Roger Carpenter and he went through a grid tournament, same kind of fighting. Then there's the boys from Arkansas and the boys from Missouri. And uh, then there was a, we even had a saying, we didn't have a, just a uh, um, penalty point or disqualification in, uh, in Texas or any other part of the Midwest. And I can uh, Remember, I think I got the very two penalty points ever gave in Texas from Alan Steen. I was fighting David Moon and knocked him out twice, and that was just two points. And then the third time, he gave me a penalty point because he didn't want to disqualify me, so that put me back a point. And David, even though I had been knocked out twice, he got up. He had a lot of spirit and a good fighter. He hit me with a sidekick in the arm and moved me back out of the ring. And, Damn near broke my arm. I was glad he didn't didn't hit me in the ribs with that kick. But uh, it, you know, I, I would have rather got caught in the ribs and got to get a chance to go ahead and finish off. But I had a pen, two penalty points against me already, and they gave um, somebody else was refereeing, but I think Trios was, and they gave um, David the Moon the, the win that time, and then uh, that was. Was that before or after we fought, Ed? That was after, wasn't it? Because you told me I had to whip his ass so, or I'd have to pay the hospital bill, right? Well, I'm going to give you just a slightly different version than uh, was told about that, uh, those stitches. On the way over, we made up a, we said whoever won the match. Well, first of all, we clashed at the same time. I hit Ed, Ed in the right eye kind of across here and down the cheek. He hit me, um, this is the second time he knocked me out. And um, he hit, no, that was, that was when we fought the first time, wasn't it? Anyway, we, we decided, to, we, they took us to the hospital and then Ed says to me, he says, Jim, so how are we gonna determine the winner of this match? And I says, well, how about the guy with the least stitches? He says, he looked at me and I looked at him and I thought he had going to get more stitches than me. And uh, I said, okay, that's fair enough. So they took him in first because they thought he needed more stitches than me. And they had an Air Force doctor there working over the weekend, a plastic surgeon. He sewed it up. And they come and got me and they laid me down. The doctor's working on me and Ed is looking over his shoulder all this time. <laughs> and the doctor kind of turned around and said to Ed, he's standing like this, you know, he says, Mr. Daniels, I, I believe this is about all the stitches I can get in this man. <laughs> and the first time Billy Wallace come to fight in Texas, he uh, went back, he won, but he went back in Black Belt Magazine, talked to him and asked him about what he thought about uh, fighting in Texas. He says, you know, he says, a point in Texas would be first degree murder in California. <laughs> and I just want to thank all of these guys here. I fought, in all, fought all over the world. And Texas was, and the boys around, around it and that fought here were the best fighters in the world. They were, um, they were the most polite, 
and most respectful to kick your ass they waste a Sunday one day then wipe it for you and then <laughs> put you back up and you you walked out of the ring friends and you walk back in the ring the next time friends again Pat was actually my first karate hero and they became the people I wanted to be and I just I never dreamed of becoming one of them I just wanted to be somewhere in the neighborhood Pat and Jen, uh, and Jack Wong used to split doing the uh, all-American championships. One of them would do it in the spring, another one would do it in the fall. And one of them won Pat's, uh, won one of Ed's, and uh, one of Pat, uh, two of Pat's. And when I won that, Pat presented me with the same belt that those four gentlemen wore. It's pretty ragged, but it's been around some of the toughest and the nicest people in the whole world. And I'm donating it to the Museum of Martial Arts that Gary Lee runs. He couldn't make it here today because he had to go fishing. But that's the way he makes, that's the way he makes his living, is by fishing. He's one of these guys that's in these fishing contests. And uh, they make damn near as much money as a golfer does. I, you know, fishing's a hell of a lot easier than golfing, I'll bet. Uh, but anyway, uh, he can't be here, so Steve, I was instructed to present this belt to you. And, uh, so, uh, there used to be a cowboy song, there, there goes my prize possession. Well, there goes my prize possession. I want them outside, of, like I said, my, my family and people like that. But, uh, materialistically wise, uh, uh, I wouldn't trade that belt for uh, a new Jaguar, you know, or something like that. But I will give it to the Museum of Martial Arts. I have some other belts that's been signed by many of these people on the thing, including Bob Wall and Pat Burleson that, uh, for my, my sons here. And then I've got the belt that the Japanese champion gave me. It goes to one of my other sons, or for, probably stay with the dojo when I die, and uh, I have a belt from the Korean champion, too. Uh, and they were pretty tough guys, so I didn't beat them, but I beat their friends. And so they presented their, presented, uh, their, their belt that they were wearing to me afterwards, and so they're important to me, but those are nailed up behind my wall. So I just want to say once again, uh, so um, honored and uh, um, I guess that's about the best thing I can say for it to be uh, to be selected to do this, and for all of you people that showed up, and and for all of my good friends of, uh, that that showed up, and for all the rest of Texans and some people that couldn't. Um, when I have, there used to be a song, another song called "Deep in the Heart of Texas." Well, my heart is deep in the heart of Texas. Thank you.